How many players would you trade the number one pick in the 2024 rookie draft for? All that and more in this episode of Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. Follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. Also read her at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. And it's a Wednesday, so that means our great friend Matt Williamson is here. Check him out on Twitter at Williamson NFL. Also, check out his new YouTube channel where he's posting a ton of videos <laughs> uh, from the Locked On Network, from his personal stuff. Just go check it out. It does absolutely great work. We've got some mailbag questions for you. And Matt, I want to start with this really good one from Kurt. Okay. He wants to know, he says he's a contending team, top three in his league, and he has the 101 pick in his rookie draft, which, by the way, congratulations for doing that. That's, that's pretty impressive. He wants to know, should I consider trading that pick for a veteran to help me win now? Wow. We're not talking super flex, correct? We're just no. talking standard leagues. Okay. Standard league, yep. And, and obviously that would make it a lot different conversation. I think there's quarterbacks that you make that move for in super flex. Man, I, I don't mean to burst your bubble or, you know, make this a short conversation, but Marvin Harrison Jr. in best ball right now is going in the second round and we don't even know what team he's going to be on. I really believe that he's an unbelievably rare prospect. So my list would be very, very short. And I went to our buddies over at Dynasty League Football and just looked at their overall rankings. And Justin Jefferson and Chase, yes, I'll make that trade right now. C.D. Lamb, yeah, I'm in. A.J. Brown, I'm in. I think I would do it for Amon Ross St. Brown. I think I'd do it for Garrett Wilson. Not so sure on Chris Olave. And then I'm done. I mean, as much as I love Brees Hall and Bijan Robinson or Tyree Kill in a win now move, I am not giving up Harrison Jr. for hardly anybody. Kate? Here's the thing. If you're already in a contending position here with that number one overall pick, I look at the potential edge that, you know, maybe targeting like an older wide receiver with uh, like an A.J. Brown for instance, which is kind of probably where that tear break lies for me out of that list. I, th I think my tear break ends a little bit earlier than yours, Matt. But I do think if you're already in a, a win now position without this, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever wide receiver we want to fill there as that trade target for that 101, I think I'm most inclined to stick with Marvin Harrison Jr. Because A, we don't know. He could have a year one impact. We're seeing, uh, especially in recent seasons, that rookie production has been very immediate. And especially with the caliber of wide receiver, you know, the caliber of wide receiver that Marvin Harrison Jr. is, I don't think anybody would be surprised if he came out to immediately produce and be a, a fantasy relevant asset straight out of the gate. So, looking at that range of outcomes, plus I get Marvin Harrison Jr. for the full length of his rookie contract, wherever he lands, I get the youth, I get the upside. Like I'm probably sticking with Marvin Harrison Jr. in most instances beyond that, you know, initial Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase kind of tier. Matt, I want to tell you about our friends at Fantasy Pros because right now they have Marvin Harrison Jr., ranked as the ninth overall player in non-super flex leagues. And I got to be honest with you, like there's a couple of players that are being drafted or ranked ahead of him, like Brees Hall, Christian McCaffrey, that I would just rather have. Uh, so I, I, I want to push you a little bit further on, like you said, Garrett Wilson and A.J. Brown. How close is that for you? Because I look at like Garrett Wilson, you know, a couple of years older, 
in a on a team where the quarterback position is in flux a little bit with Aaron Rodgers, why wouldn't I just rather have Marvin Harrison Jr. moving forward? Yeah, and I'll be honest. I mean, I went first, and then I listened to Kate, and then I'm sitting here reconsidering, like, would I really do it for A.J. Brown and St. Brown? You know, I'm like, I'm not sure on those guys. I really think Garrett Wilson is a bird in the hand and a supreme player, so I think I would do it for him because the age doesn't bother me that much. It's not a running back. I mean, these guys should all last quite a while. You know, I mean, I, I don't think, you know, 10 years from now, maybe I get one less year out of one than the other or whatever. So that doesn't Would you trade him for much. Gibbs or Bijan? No, but that was actually what I was going to throw to you guys is what would you need if you truly are a contender and you have 101, which good for you, you're playing Dynasty right if you did that, by the way, for to pivot off 101 for Tyreek or McCaffrey, someone who's much older I need at least a future first or something, uh, uh, an influx of youth, and then try to win it this year and hope I have multiple high picks next year. But that's still a deal I'm not real excited about. I definitely think you would need something. Like that just kind of becomes one of these perpetual dynasty like standstills for me where mm -hmm. it becomes very reasonable given the situation, given the age gap given you know the the difference in where these players are in their careers and the the potential for you know not not a ton of mileage out of either of these players just based on where they're at like that's where it becomes very reasonable to me to ask for a first but I also don't know that there's anybody that's going to be able to mm -hmm. or, or be willing to you know satiate that Mm -hmm. requirement and it becomes a bit of a stalemate for me just in my projection of what the market could look like matt i just have one more question for you how tempted would you be to try to trade down from like 101 to maybe 103 or 104 and then pick up a veteran on top of that that could help you win right now is that more appealing than just trying to flip marvin harrison jr for cd lamb I mean, I think we're all agreeing moving off 101 this year is going to be really difficult. Like, I don't know that I'd sleep well at night doing it, no matter any of these consequences, any of these situations we did. But maybe to three. I mean, Rome or neighbors, I think, are potential first overall picks a lot of years in Dynasty. So I don't know that the drop off is extreme. If I could pick up the running back I need that's an every week starter that's a third year player in the process and try to win it this year, I think I could justify that. It's tough. It's it's, it's really tough. tough. Yeah. I uh, because I man, Marvin Harrison is such a good prospect. And when you compare him to some of the other receivers that you were mentioning, like Garrett Wilson and Chris Alave, he was on the same team two years ago and was out yeah. producing those guys. So it's what makes this conversation so difficult. I want to stick with the draft because I think there's a really interesting situation developing in Atlanta between what do they do at the quarterback position, whether it's trade for somebody or draft somebody. We will discuss that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all of your NBA favorites and your favorite players, your favorite teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. I love betting on the futures market. I love betting on who's going to be in the, the play-in game, who's going to make the NBA playoffs. You can get some really good odds on the MVP uh, race now as well. So go check out all of those. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. 
All right. Our next question comes from Tim. He wants to know, is Justin Fields a better plan for Atlanta than drafting a rookie QB? Kate, what do you think? I am a little bit torn on this one. So we look at Justin Fields and his sort of overall trajectory, right? And where we've seen his career go, I do think that largely speaking, he wasn't really given the the tools, given the right assets to succeed in Chicago. The whole the whole tenure there in Chicago was kind of a dumpster fire, but I think we finally got a peek at some of the more consistency that he's able to offer once they integrated DJ Moore into the mix. And we saw that, you know, with Justin Fields, DJ Moore had the most productive season of his career. So I think we want to look at this question in terms of, you know, what what does this quarterback situation mean for the skill position players? I do think Justin Fields could do a lot for this offense schematically based on, you know, the the talent they have in the run game, having a mobile quarterback like Justin Fields that, you know, I, I don't think we've necessarily seen what his true upside as a passer is yet, but perhaps the assets of Drake London and, and Kyle Pitts can help us figure that out. We've seen fantasy assets around Justin Fields be quite productive. So I lean in the, the direction of Fields from a, an NFL perspective. There's obviously a lot to be said for having a rookie for the entirety of their rookie deal. Like there is a, a huge contract advantage, which is why we're in this com having this conversation in the first place regarding Justin Fields going to another team because, you know, having an extra three seasons uh, for a, a star quarterback on their rookie deals, that is a massive contractual advantage over, you know, let's say any other divisions or, or teams within your division, maybe that are, are having to pay a significant chunk of that salary cap toward the cap, the quarterback position. Like it does put you in a position to win now. So I want to say for the dynasty assets in Atlanta, I'm leaning fields. But if I'm the Atlanta Falcons, the better move is probably to attempt to trade up for one of these rookie quarterbacks or see what they have in maybe one of these lower tier rookies, J.J. McCarthy flying up draft boards. We'll see how things shake out. Matt? I agree with 99% of what Kate had to say there. And as you can imagine, the show that I do every day for the Steelers, I talk about Justin Fields a lot. <laughs> and I've dug into him quite a bit. And I think we know what he is. And I do very much agree that he has had a very tough surroundings, especially his first two years in the league. I mean, coaching malpractice going on there left and right, not putting much around him. But I also think you know, when you dig into this player, you have to realize – he is a high interception guy. He's a high fumble guy. He turns the ball over a lot. His sack that he sack numbers that he takes are obscene. And is it all him? Of course not. But he holds the ball a long time. There's a lot of negative plays with Fields, and there's also a lot of very positive plays. If I'm trying to win the NFC South, then the answer is Fields over a rookie. If I'm trying to win the Super Bowl. I would like to trade up for one of the top three and see what's behind door number two. If we're just talking dynasty, obviously, and this isn't a question, uh, uh, an acquisition like Cousins would be the best. You know, I mean, as a solid, I know what I'm getting, pocket passer type, because Fields would steal, you know, running back touches and touchdowns from Bijan as well. In terms of just Fields versus McCarthy. <laughs> I probably still go Fields, though. You know, I mean, if you could trade to the top two, which I don't think is probably in the cards for them, that's a totally different story for me. But versus Daniels, McCarthy, Penix, you know, any of those type of dudes, I think I would rather have Fields for my dynasty guys. And you kind of answered my next question. If Fields is the quarterback in Atlanta, is this a knock on Bijan? Like, do we do we officially put Gibbs yeah. ahead of Bijan? Because I would be concerned about the same thing. It's not the rushing yards. I actually think Bijan mm -hmm. would become a little bit more efficient. But the touchdowns, I, I just don't know if the touchdowns would be there for Bijan. 
I think it's something to worry about. Uh, I mean, it, I don't know. You know, like Josh Allen's obviously a detriment. Jalen Hurts is a detriment. Mm -hmm. I think of Fields as scoring more touchdowns from distance than those guys, you know, as opposed to taking the plunges. But I think it would probably steal two or three touchdowns off Robinson's plate. Yeah, I think so as well. And then uh, I just want to ask you really quickly, how do you think Fields would mesh with Drake London and Kyle Pitts? Because those are, again, two very valuable dynasty assets, or at least players that were valuable dynasty assets at mm -hmm. one point. Uh, do you think that's a quarterback that would elevate their value, or is it kind of just a little bit the same? I'd say good enough. You know, I mean, Kate mentioned that he got a lot. We got a lot of production out of DJ Moore as a fantasy community last year. I don't think London would be all that much different. Pitts and Cole Komet aren't anything similar, but I thought Komet produced to his, you know, close to his ceiling. I don't think he has a particularly high ceiling. So, and it's a different offensive coordinator, of course, but I think it's good enough. I don't think I would shy away from those guys for that reason. Kate, what do you want the Falcons to do here? Because I think we, we've talked about the Falcons a lot over the last couple of weeks. Like this is one of the most interesting situations for Dynasty because there are so many valuable assets and they just need a quarterback to unlock them. What are you hoping the Falcons do here? As a B. John Robinson manager, as a, a Drake London manager, as a Kyle Pitts manager, I'm absolutely hoping for Kirk Cousins. Now, Obviously, there's questions about the health. Will he be ready for the seat? Like, we don't really know, you know, is any portion of Kirk Cousins' game going to be impacted by this injury? I don't know. But the good thing is he's a pure pocket passer. So, you know, we really just need him mobile enough to navigate the pocket. And, you know, I think mentally he's got a good enough feel for the pocket that if he's physically ready to be out there, we're in good shape. He's also not going to be stealing – uh, runs as you guys had alluded to with Justin mm -hmm. Fields. He's not going to snipe any of those carries away from Bijan Robinson or Tyler Algier as a change of pace guy. So I think from like a, a situation of, or a question of like what quarterback will maximize all of the assets within that system. I do think it's Kirk cousins just because he's, he's going to, pass the ball he's going to pass it efficiently which obviously bodes well for the receivers and you know you're not going to have much of the run game impacted uh you know in, in terms of carry totals for Bijan. kind of an ideal situation for everybody probably except for kirk cousins all right let's talk about which rookie receivers from the 2023 class are we a little bit lukewarm on going into year two we will get to that next Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. On tomorrow's show, Kate and I are breaking down the AFC North, talking about the biggest winners and losers and some trade targets, so make sure you tune in for that. And then on Friday's show, we are discussing the NFC North. A lot of fun players in that division that we will get to, so make sure you guys are downloading the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Our final question here is from at Fantasy Football Champ. Great name. Uh, he wants to know, which 2023 rookie wide receivers are you out on going into 2024? Every single year, we see people get excited about these year two receivers, and there's quite a few of them. But Matt, what's the one for you? Let's stick with the top three rounds that you're just not quite sold on right now. So I originally jotted down Quentin Johnston, Marvin Mims, Jonathan Mingo, Cedric Tillman, Guys I liked a lot more a year ago than I do now. But if you look at this in the context of what those guys cost, I mean, you're not paying the same price as a year ago. I'm not out on any of them. I don't think the book has totally been written on any of those. And we have some coaching changes for a couple of those guys. Um, I still think the talent is there. So I really didn't have an answer. And then it kind of dawned on me, but back, back when Ryan and I used to do this and the four of us would compile things together. Of the four of us, I was always the lowest on Jordan Addison. And my hunch is I still am. I think he's a number two in the NFL. I think he's a good player. He was productive this past year, but I don't think he's, I think he's a little overvalued in Dynasty, to be frank. I'm shocked that a pit guy is going up against uh, another pit guy. This is, this is crime. <laughs> well, he left. Uh, 
I know. <laughs> There's a garage there. That's what it is. Uh, I'm going to need you to respond as the resident Jordan Addison uh, fan. Sure. I, I would love to. I knew we were going to have this conversation. Some that's, no, that's yeah. great. Yeah. I, I, I'm actually a little bit out on another first round receiver. I, Quentin Johnson's the easy one. I don't even sure. really want to spend much time on him. But to me, it's Jackson Smith, the Jigba. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know he was wide receiver one for a lot of people last year. I, I just don't know with a new, a whole new offensive staff, a new coaching staff, what his role is going to be on this team. I would rather have Ad- Addison because what I saw from him this year is like Kevin O'Connell isn't just going to use him in the short to immediate parts of the field. Like they're going to throw him the ball down the field. And those are really valuable targets. I just don't know if JSN is going to get those. And JSN is still being drafted as a top 20 receiver right now, which I think is crazy. Matt, I, Kate and I were talking pre-show. S- somebody's going to have to explain to me, why is Rashi Rice being drafted like seven spots behind JSN right now? I, I don't get it at all. I don't have a great answer for that. I'm still very much on board on JSN. I adored him coming out of Ohio State. I didn't think he was Harrison Neighbors, but I thought he was clearly the best receiver in that class. But there are some concerns. I mean, I see what you're saying, and I might rather have Rice. I mean, if we were just talking about that, I assume you'd rather have Addison than JSN. Yeah, but it's close. Okay, I, okay. I, I think Addison is a tiny bit overvalued, but I, I've no, I've got no problem with this price right now. I, I think he's being drafted as wide receiver 17, wide receiver 18. That's that's fine. Um, but I'm not actively trying to go out and acquire him in every single league, uh, league either. I just was impressed by what I saw from him as a rookie. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm actually going to go in a different direction. I'm going to go with one of these low value wide receivers here, a third round guy. I want to talk about Jalen Hyatt, who drafted to the New York Giants, obviously not an ideal circumstance. We just did a recap of the New York Giants this week. Uh, Fun fact, uh, this offense wasn't good. Uh, Like (laughs) it just, it just wasn't good. But I will say that Jalen Hyatt coming out of Tennessee had all of the markers uh, and red flags for the makings of a one trick pony. And I do think that a lot of that came to fruition. Now, again, there was, I, you know, like I, I look at the stat line and, you know, 23 catches, 317 or 73 receiving yards. And you know what, you look at the, the, where he ranks in terms of uh, the 2023 rookie class average 16.2 yards per reception that ranked third among all rookie wide receivers last year with 25 or more targets. But again, you had this low catch percentage, uh, just 57.5% uh, catch rate and the high yards per reception. He does not have the makings of a possession wide receiver. I don't think that he's going to be a guy that regardless of circumstance, you're really going to be able to plug into your lineup on any given week. And if I can, I'm going to look to off. I have a couple of Jalen Hyatt chairs and he's going to be one of these guys that all off season long, I'm going to try to sneak him into other trades to get him off my roster because there is going to be some upside. If they find an answer at the quarterback position, Jalen Hyatt will have upside, but I do think that his style of play is more conducive to hurting you most weeks than it is to winning you most weeks. Matt, I want to ask you a quick question about one more receiver before we go. I, listen, I love Tank Dell. He might have been my favorite mm-hmm. player in the draft last year. I love watching him play. But even me, I'm, I'm looking at him being drafted as wide receiver 21 overall. And I think that's a little high. Am I, am I crazy for thinking he's maybe a little bit overvalued as you know a top 22 receiver right now? Yeah, I'm going to get to him in two seconds because I think just one Hyatt note as well. I think it would hurt him dramatically if Rome or neighbors ended up with the Giants as yeah. well. And I know Kate mentioned if they can fix their quarterback s- situation, I give them a pretty low chance of fixing their quarterback situation. I mean, I think it's probably Daniel Jones for another year. Sorry, and if they, Daniel. yeah, and if they land a receiver, I don't know that that passing game can support it. You know, for a guy like Hyatt. As for Dell, yes, like I would, gl- I would much rather have Nico than Dell. But I'm a little prejudiced against the small dudes, to be honest with you. And I have some old school scout in me that I want the prototypical X receiver type guy. But my only concern with Dell is durability, to be very honest with you. And that would bump him a little bit down my receiver ranks. 
and I'm also not convinced that it's just going to be Tank Dell and Nico Collins this year. Like, Agreed. I won't be surprised yeah. if Houston is very aggressive trying to get another receiver. Maybe it's in the draft because this wide receiver class is loaded. Maybe they go out and try to get a free agent to, to mm-hmm. give them more stability there. I do worry that Tank Dell is going to be a very much hit or miss receiver when it comes to fantasy. And I don't know if you can rely on him every single week. And if you're being drafted as wide receiver 21, I kind of need you to be a reliable option. And unfortunately that's probably not going to be tank Dell. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On dynasty, your first listen every single day. Again, make sure you check out the show tomorrow when we break down the AFC North from the 2023 season, go download the podcast, wherever you get your podcast free and available on all platforms. Go follow Matt on Twitter at Williamson NFL. Go check out his YouTube channel as well. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.